And I'd like now to invite onto the stage, of course, our guest of honor, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister of Singapore, uh, Mr. Teo Chi Hien, to deliver a keynote address. DPM, please. very eloquent and elegant Chairman, Ambassador Gopinath Pillay, Excellencies, Chief Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to join all of you at the second South Asian Diaspora Conference. This convention, organized by the Institute of South Asian Studies, has created an important platform to bring members of the South Asian Diaspora together here in Singapore to network and exchange ideas, as well as to build links and forge deeper ties with South Asia. I'm happy to see such a good turnout and a strong lineup of speakers from around the world. We are living in an age of unprecedented mobility. Globalization has accelerated the flow of people, goods, services, and ideas across borders. The ease and relatively low cost of travel and communication allow people to move around quite easily and yet keep in touch from different parts of the world. A person may be born in one country, grow up in another, study in a third, work in a fourth or even a fifth, and eventually return to his country of origin again. According to UN data released in September 2013, there are some 232 million people, or more than 3% of the world's population, living outside the country in which they were born. This is up from 175 million in 2000. If we put all these 232 million people in, say, a hypothetical single country, it would be the world's fifth most populous country, falling somewhere between Indonesia with 251 million people and Brazil with some 200 million people. Asia has seen the largest increase of those on the move, adding some 20 million people who have moved from other countries or regions since 2000. Apart from the movement of people between developing to developed countries, we are also seeing a growing number of people who choose to live in other developing countries. The so-called South-South migration reflects new economic opportunities in the developing world. Regardless of whether they are highly skilled professionals, successful entrepreneurs, second-generation migrants, or workers seeking a better future, diasporas are now recognized as a significant resource and potential agents for social economic transformation. They advance the growth and development of their countries of origin, most visibly through the remittances they send home. Last year, officially recorded remittances worldwide topped 530 billion US dollars, according to the World Bank. This amount has trebled in a decade and is now more than three times the global aid budget. The actual figure could be even higher as billions of remittances go unrecorded through informal channels. India, for example, received the largest amount of remittances at $70 billion US in 2012, amounting to some 3.7% of its GDP and larger than India's earnings from IT exports. Such inflows of money have uplifted millions of households, improving access to basic needs, health care and education. In some countries, they have also driven the growth of the middle class. Diasporas have also made significant contributions to the development of their countries of origin through direct investments as well as technology and knowledge transfers in fields such as science, IT and medicine. They serve 
as a bridge connecting their country of origin to other parts of the world. Perhaps the best and most well-known illustration is the Indian IT industry. To a large extent, its success can be attributed to the trust, reputation building and networking by Indian IT professionals in Silicon Valley. They were instrumental in getting foreign MNCs to set up subsidiaries and offshore centres in India. But that was only the start. Many of them also started their own IT companies in India or provided venture capital for startups, stimulating an entrepreneurial culture in India. Today, Indian IT giants like Infosys and Wipro are recognised as global technology leaders. Host countries benefit too. The US, in particular, has benefited from the welcome it extends to migrants. For example, more than 40% of America's Fortune 500 companies were founded by an immigrant or child of an immigrant. Household names like Google, Yahoo, eBay, YouTube and Intel were all started by immigrants. A Duke University study, slightly dated 2007, showed that foreign-born persons founded a quarter of the US's technology and engineering firms, and these companies employed then 450,000 workers and generated $52 billion of sales in 2005. I'm quite sure these numbers have far exceeded that by now. And the South Asian diaspora figured significantly in these numbers. Diasporas also help to promote the concept of a global commons of values, ideas, arts and sciences. They build greater cross-cultural appreciation and mutual respect. The achievements of the South Asian diaspora are particularly notable. Entrepreneurs, IT professionals, CEOs, Nobel laureates and prize-winning writers, musicians, and filmmakers have helped to enrich cultures and build bridges across the world. Singapore has long had an association with the South Asian diaspora, who have come to our region and Singapore in several waves over the centuries. As traders from as early as around 200 to 300 BC and during the colonial period of the 19th and 20th centuries, these early migrants played pioneering roles in various aspects of our social, economic and political development, not just in Singapore, but in the whole Southeast Asian region. Today, South Asians continue to come to Singapore and make important contributions here. Many are actively engaged in business, professional services and entrepreneurship, as well as in our civic and cultural life. Your presence has also added to Singapore's cultural richness and diversity. Yet, the South Asian diaspora is just one part of what makes up multiracial, multireligious and multilingual Singapore, which is really a microcosm of what's happening worldwide, where people of different races, different origins, mix together to create new value. On the economic front in Singapore, there are about 67,000 foreign companies registered here, including 6,000 from India, 7,000 from China, 4,000 from Japan, 12,000 from Europe, and 4,000 from the US. Many Singapore companies also run their regional and global operations from here. Singapore thus serves as a unique meeting place where diasporas from different origins can make connections, form linkages with people from other parts of the world, sparking new ideas, creating new opportunities. And this exemplifies the positive role that diasporas can play in bridging different parts of the world and creating a commons for values and ideas and creating value for a better life for people all over the world. This South Asian Diaspora Convention is a good example of how diasporas can come together to create these connections 
and build this new value, and how Singapore can play a part in building connections and helping to create this value. Our geographical location at the heart of Asia and the crossroads between the East and the West has allowed us to develop into a regional and global transport, financial and telecommunications node. We are a useful and a natural springboard for the South Asian diaspora to engage the rest of Asia and the world, just as we remain open to people and businesses from other parts of the world who want to get to know our region better and explore the many opportunities in a fast-growing Asia. Chairman Ambassador Gopinath Pillay has laid out the very interesting, stimulating and exciting program that you have over the next two days. I wish all of you an excellent and very good conference and hope you make many new connections in Singapore and beyond. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Teo Chi Hien.